Okay guys, just to let you know, I'm sorry for last week. I had no internet connection. Something happened with my um, Optimum Online internet. Something in the back of my building happened and it seemed that the cable was not working properly. I had very intermittent or almost no internet whatsoever. So I could not see no Raw, no SmackDown, no Impact Wrestling, no Major League Wrestling. Hell, I would have saw Reality Wrestling. Nothing. I had nothing to watch. And this is a little a little something for anyone who is really connected to the internet. I say this 100% to you. As someone who thinks ahead in case something happens like what happened to me for the last week, download some content, put it on a small hard drive, or put it on your computer so if anything happens that either you can't afford your internet or you're in a place that has no internet connection, you'll have something to watch. Because I had no internet. Now, I could have gone in the street and I could have tried to use the, um, the internet, like um, the um, NYC free link, but I'll have to go in the street to do that. And with my condition where I'm injured, I can't do that. A majority of my time's in my house. So it was a good thing I thought I should make sure I download a couple of shows, some movies, maybe some audiobooks. So if anything ever happened, I have something to look at and listen to. And. There you go. Bob's your uncle. Remember, don't think the cloud is going to protect you. Netflix will leave. Openbox will leave. Hulu can go away. Even YouTube can go away. What do you have then? You should always have a backup. Now that I've done this little service announcement, <laughs> service announcement, let's get to SmackDown Live. I did see a few moments of Raw and it was disgusting. To see EC3 get destroyed by Seth Rollins with a steel chair because they wanted to use somebody to nail because he does not want a special guest referee with Baron Corgan. Also, I feel sorry for Elias. Got the same thing. So, let's get through this show. I want to do this very quickly because especially I know people don't watch it. One, the pay-per-view stomping grounds. What is that little saying they have right now? Um, now what was it again? Um, they kick ass and take names for the pay-per-view. Really? They're saying stomping ground. We're going to kick ass and take names. Vince really must be stretching it thinking this good shit up. Oh my gosh. I, I couldn't believe they went there with that. They are really trying so hard to make the content better the way Vince wanted it to be. If this wasn't Vince's idea, this was one of the writers coming up with something that Vince would like. And it just shows. This entire show was long-winded. I think that's going to be my title. I'm not even going to cover everything here. It just feels like it. When it came to Shane McMahon and his segment with Miz, Drew, Elias. Elias almost said nothing or didn't say anything. Drew said a little bit, but he felt empty. You know why? Because Drew is being sacrificed to Roman Reigns. It's so sad. And then you get The Miz, who is legitimately one of the current best heels the company had. And they sacrificed him to allow Shane McMahon to become a heel and him to be a face. And he's boring. Boring. Hearing he's going to do a, a, a Miz TV, what, next week after Stomping Grounds? I don't care. Then you have the match between, it's an elimination match, a tag elimination match with Miz Truth, who's hiding under the ring again, which drives me insane. I don't know why they're doing this to him. Drew and Elias. And I knew what was going to happen. It has been so badly telegraphed. It is so, not even by the numbers, it's so boring. I'm not even going to say who won. If you don't know, guess who won? The Shane McMahon Club won. And they destroyed the Miz. And I feel sorry for Drew. Because it means nothing. Let's move on. We saw the Iconics with Paige, as well as Kyrie Zane, Zane. And the wonderful Barry Asuka. And they're saying, well, when we go to Tokyo, Japan next time, 
we're going to have a chance to get up against those titles. And if we win, we get a future. They're in my face. I don't care. I have not seen Kyrie Zane for weeks upon weeks. I have not seen Oscar for weeks upon weeks upon weeks. I have not seen Paige for weeks upon weeks upon weeks. No vignettes. No backstage segments. No in-ring segments. Nothing. And now you're going to throw them to the Iconics because you're going to Tokyo. Thanks, Vince. Now we have Selena Vega. I don't think I got a picture of all of it. I think I got the image with Selena dealing with Apollo Crews. I didn't even see what happened last week. So I don't know what the situation is. From what I can tell, I think Apollo wants to challenge Andrade. See, and almost why? I don't know. And now Zelina saying that, hey, are you trying to hit on me? Really? Then almost basically destroys him afterward. Just, it feels empty. Boring. Two out of three fall. This is Kofi Kingston, who shouldn't be in the match. Seth Rollins, who shouldn't be in the match, supposedly if he's destroying everyone, what is the point of being in the match? And I, I'm going to get the truth in a minute of what happened with Rockstar Spud. But let me get this because I'm remembering and it's pissing me off. We got a two out of three fall match. Kofi gets the first fall with a trouble in paradise within three seconds on Sami Zayn, which it, it, I, I wanted to turn it off after that. What was the point of this two out of three falls match if Sami gets destroyed so easily? And then it's Seth who wins. You didn't even try to make it interesting and maybe let Kevin Owens get the pin. Then you have to have a, a, a possible next one after that tiebreaker. They do this. Boring. Huh. All right, let's do two at the same time. We got the Fireflies Funhouse and we have what happened with our truth and Rockstar Spud. I know, well, let me do the Firefly Flood. I'm watching the Firefly Funhouse for one reason. It means one thing. And I know so many people are loving still the fun house segment, but I'm not. Because it means nothing. If anyone's liking it, more power to you. But I'm going to ask you this one question. Has it been a match yet? Has it been an introduction yet? Do we actually know that this incredible run of these segments of the Firefly Fun House are going to lead anywhere? No. So all of this is nothing. It's garbage. It's trash. And I don't care if anyone says, are you really that deaf? It's the best thing of Raw. Really. If the Firefly Fun House is all that's good of Raw, then definitely if he gets in the ring and he starts jobbing out, doesn't get a title and solidify himself as something, you're really going to feel really bad about loving those segments because in the end, no matter how wonderful those segments are, if Bray Wyatt doesn't do anything with them, what does it mean? Nothing. Who cares about these stupid vignettes and stupid ring segments and stupid... I'm, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm going through the motions of if he does any in-ring segments, if he does any backstage segments, other than the Firefly Funhouse, means nothing. I'm just being honest. Now, Becky Lynch. I'm just seeing nothing of her, which is a good thing because she's on Raw. And that's a good thing. Yeah, they did some video packages of it, but it's good to see she's on Raw. Now, Bailey, that's sad. Bailey in a moment of bliss. It's like, why do I care about Bailey dealing with Alexa Bliss? And seeing that the charismatic Nikki Cross, who was so fun as a nutty woman, who looks sexy as hell as a nutty woman, looks average now. A sidekick to a woman who's shorter than her almost. And they're trying to say, th this is what they're trying to say, that the Lexa Bliss 
is angry because no one cared about her, no one believed in her, and being treated so badly, particularly by Bailey. Really? Really. If you're going to actually try and make this into something, she should have gone through and understand there were other people there at the same time as her. She should have gone through Mella. She should have gone through Dana Brooke. She should have gone through Lana. She should have gone through the majority of women that were on NXT and treated like garbage before she went to Bailey because she was treated badly by everybody. That would have made better sense. Nope. She says everyone treated better. It. I. Hearing her say that only Charlotte was the only one in her corner is stupid. Because if I remember correctly in NXT, Charlotte chewed her out a couple of times before anyone else. I could be wrong. You guys tell me below. This was stupid. Now, the final thing I'm going to talk about is mm, our truth What what was that? R-Truth was trying to escape after that match with The Miz dealing with Drew and Elias. And the stupidest thing about that entire segment leading to the outside with Rockstar Spud. I'm using Rockstar Spud, not Drake Madrick. There's no point in calling him that. He's Rockstar Spud. He should be a Rockstar, and he's not. You see Shelton Benjamin running around the ring, acting like he doesn't understand what the 24-7 title means. That you got to pin our truth Because after he was eliminated in that match, he could have jumped on top of him. But then, instead of doing that, he basically grabs the title and runs around the ring, acting like it's his. Then, Truth grabs the title. Then, he goes outside looking for Mella. And then, he thought he saw Mella. Nope. It's Rockstar Spud with fake boobies and... Basically managing to pin our truth up against an SUV, wins the title, and now he drives away with it saying that I'm going to get married in a couple of weeks. This show sucked. This show sucked. And that's all I'm going to say. I don't know if I'm going to do another SmackDown Live after this because it's getting bad. But this show sucked. If you liked it, tell me why, and maybe I'll try and have a better perspective. But as it stands, there was nothing good about this. Even the match with Xavier Woods versus... I, I'm, I'm angry about that match because this was all about destroying Xavier to make Dolph look strong, which means nothing. The steel cage match we know is going to be good because both of them can wrestle. But it means nothing. I would rather see a feud between Xavier Woods and Dolph than seeing Dolph basically destroy Xavier Woods for what? Super Showdown, getting pissed about it. It, it means nothing. It was a long-winded show. I'm done. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.